start to start from scratch. So. Um, since last week when um, I made a video, um, lots changed. Um, well, it's not so. I'm sorry. It's no focus. Okay, it's in focus now. Go. So since last week, um, lots lots kind of changed. Like obviously we were unsuccessful in trying to find a flat land, which meant our whole plans had to change. Which meant we came back here and try to focus a lot on you know fishing and stuff like that. So Dan, you know, stepped up, sort of tried tried out different methods and sort of went down to the stream. It sort of went the way that in the back of my mind I thought I'd, I knew it would go, which obviously it went unsuccessful. Um, we didn't come out here with any sort of fishing equipment, anything like that. N none of us had really fished either, like properly back in the UK. So I, I did think it was not going to be as successful, but you know, it was like it was nice to have that little bit of hope. Um, so that's kind of gone. It's worth trying, wasn't it? But yeah, we, we knew it was going to be very difficult because we didn't have experience. But yeah. Um, so that 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 was one thing. Um, you know, but the hunger hasn't massive massively affected our morale, um, affected energy, um, and I've seen I've seen a big change in Dan over the sort of the last last few weeks. Like when we first come come out here, I've seen Dan adapt to the situations a lot more. Uh, sort of in the first week, he was very sort of headstrong. This is how we wanted it to be done. You know, throwing out orders sort of left, right, and centre. Um, thinking this is the film that he wanted to make um, but as, as sort of time's gone on the sort of surroundings and sort of energy sort of the weather as well has sort of made him adapt as well I think I think in a good way you know to know that actually you know the film's going to turn out the way it is and you know I, I don't come from a film background so I've sort of relied quite heavily on Dan for that as well but as time's gone on you know we're both having input on, you know, how we want certain things, what we want certain things to do. So, you know, especially now, sort of definitely becoming sort of more equals, whereas most probably in week one I was leaning on him too much and, you know, he he, he, he thought himself as a maybe a, maybe a li little bit more of a leader, but now it's sort of, it's, it's levelled out pretty, pretty well. And, you know, he's lent on me, I think, especially for... The motivation and m morale being like, because obviously he's getting down to more skin and bones, so his his level of energy is definitely a lot lower than mine. And sort of I've taken it upon myself to just do certain things, which you know, stand down, collect some water, as simple as it is. You know, does take a little bit of energy because you know you've got to get up in steep hills. But it also gives me time to reflect, and you know, I've I've had a lot of time to think out here. You know, what I want to do next, you know, one being the next challenge, what, what do I want to do there? And then sort of also, you know, what what do I want to do career-wise career, career wise and going, going forward? So that's exciting for me in, in my head. Um, but oh, the, the one thing I still can't control is, you know, one, the weather. It's become a lot more um, unpredictable since, since sort of last week. It was It was very predictable in the first week, you know. Come seven o'clock, it would rain. It would go on for a few hours, but over the sort of the last week, it's some days it hasn't rained, some days it does, some days it's rained all day, um, and then that that I suppose is us getting more into the monsoon season and sort of what we were trying to facilitate before we came out here was we were thinking that it would be raining all the time, um, but actually when we came out here it was a lot hotter than we anticipated. Um, I still can't get. You know, scratching all the time, so I can't control bugs. But you know, I, I, you know, Wednesday last week I was almost ready to throw in the towel. Um, I'd got my body had got really cold. I thought, you know, what am I doing out here? You know, what am I gaining from this? And actually, what I'm gaining from this is quite a lot, to be fair. You know, you know, one more more sense of character. Um, but two, you know. It's, it's, it's a story to tell, you know, so we tried to plough through, we came up with different ways, you know, it's about surviving, so we use stuff, we've used certain stuff that, okay, you might not have in a certain survival aspect, but, you know, we had brought them along, so we were going to use them in different ways, one being the bin bag at night, one it's meant 
that I'm now keeping in body heat, but it's, it's allowed Dan to use sort of what we, it's almost like a uh, material blanket um, for him to use. It's an blanket. emergency yeah, foil. Yeah, emergency blanket. Em for emergency him. foil. Emergency foil blanket for him to use by himself, which, which has meant that actually we've both gained, uh, you know, we're both keeping a little bit warmer. It's, it's now getting to a stage where we might have to rethink that because it's, it's now getting to a stage where it's getting even colder. But, you know, we, we, we are adapting and we're, you know, we're trying to, I'm trying to count down the days and, you know, I'm working in percentages, you know, we're 75% of the way through this whole thing now. Got 25% to go, 5% every day. You know, we're nearly there, you know, and my stomach knows that, I know that. It's about counting down the hours. We're sort of running out of things, you know, to fill our day with because we're not fishing, didn't want to exert that energy we've got a long trek ahead of us on Sunday so it's about building ourselves up we're gonna uh, smash a diet of um, bugs up until then um, we're gonna try and get a little fire going to boost, boost them around maybe get some warm water in us as well I think you know that that would give our body great 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 boost it's about just continuing the way we've continued uh, we've been going because you know it's, it's been successful you know we haven't failed you know haven't had to give up, you know, we've both shown a great sense of character, you know, you know, and, and I think, I think we've got this, and, you know, it'll be interesting this season, once we finish this, where we can take on maybe next journey, you know, can we step it up a gear, can we, you know, do stuff differently, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so, uh, this whole kind of project's been very interesting, I've kind of learned a lot of things out here, uh, so far. One of the main things as well is kind of find that balance, balance between like risk and recklessness, essentially. Because you know, uh, you know, risk and recklessness are two completely different things. Uh, when we went out to kind of find the flat land, hopefully to find more creatures and, and next to the river, we kind of were really kind of going from the level of risk over to the recklessness. Because you know, we were going a route which we were unsure about, it was taking a long time, we were dehydrated, we were starved, we were, we were like lack of energy. But I feel like out here now, we've got a nice balance between the two now. You know, having that water is great, but you know, in your life you've got to find a balance between risk and recklessness. Uh, but often, the thing with risk and recklessness is that they both sometimes offer big like rewards. There's big kind of, you know, uh, kind of returns you can get on it essentially in terms of like, what you learn and you know uh, how you develop as a person. Uh, kind of recently, we've been spending more and more time in bed. I guess, or I say in bed, but we've been spending more and more time in a shelter. Uh, kind of going into there early, or well, a lot of times because of rain, uh, and then essentially uh, getting you know get out, getting out of there a bit later in the morning. It's just because uh, I think it kind of uh, allows us to rest a bit more. Because uh, we don't really sleep the whole time, so it's a bit like very interrupted in terms of. Uh... I just need to get my audio on. Sorry, man. Let's keep recording. Okay, so uh, out here you kind of learn so much, uh, especially things about or the notion about risk and recklessness. Uh, like there are times when we've been very reckless in terms of when we were uh, trying to find the more flat land so heading a bit further up the river to find where the land was more flat as kind of we were told by Google Maps, Maps and Google Earth before we even came out here that it'd be more flat and open which would hopefully bring the possibility of more creatures as well as being more remote but you know with like lack of water lack of energy we kind of were really kind of taking a massive risk and that be became very reckless uh, so I think coming back here at that point after a few days uh, really changed the whole notion and you know the risk is a lot more measurable here, a lot more controlled. Uh, the thing about like risk and recklessness is that often it can bring big rewards to yourself and kind of pay you back in terms of the way you grow as a person and what you can achieve so it's kind of always tempting to kind of go against that. Okay so yeah recently we do find ourselves kind of finding ourselves spending more time in a shelter because this is partly because of the rain but also because of our kind of low calorie diet at the moment 
we don't have the kind of energy to be kind of moving around all day and it kind of shortens our day as well uh, we spend less time out in the daylight which means you know it's a shorter day and we get back to our shelter a bit early and we wake up a bit later and get out there a bit later but because you know we're not eating too much food we need to slow down our metabolism and the best way to slow down your metabolism is to kind of stop moving so lying down is probably one of the best things you can do uh, in order to do that because at the end of the day uh, we do have potentially like a four hour trek out of here uh, just to find people uh, and that's going to require a lot of energy we've got a lot of gear to carry we haven't got anybody carrying it for us unfortunately we don't have any kind of car planned or any way to get out other than walking so it's going to be quite a big trek and we need the energy for that and that is you know that is our main thing at the moment. That's our main challenge that's going to be coming up, being able to make that trek. Uh, personally, I found James to be a massive source of inspiration out here. He's uh, got a lot of energy. Uh, you know, there's times when we both feel, at different times, we both feel low, the times when we feel high. I feel like when I was moving, trying to go down a stream, I got a lot of high energy. And when I'm kind of not moving too much, and when I'm doing like the meticulous part of this kind of whole project, just like changing SD cards when motivation goes low. But definitely having two people out here definitely makes it a lot easier in terms of having that kind of motivation and kind of that drive to keep on going because you keep each other going strong. And definitely he's a very uh, strong character. And he, he's like ultimately he's got a lot of positivity about him. Uh, he's never given up. He's never really shown really much any kind of weakness or anything like that. He's never really been down for too long. That's something that sometimes happens to me. Especially when I've got really low energy, you know, with my body fat kind of dripping down, with my abs starting to come out, which hasn't happened in a long, long time. Which I'm not a fan of, I prefer to have quite a bit of fat on me. To give me a bit of energy. Uh, yeah, James is always there and he's, you know, strong the whole way through. And uh, yeah, you know, he likes to sleep like we all do. But I like to sleep as well. So yeah, it's definitely great having him out here. I wouldn't want anyone else out here. Uh, one thing I do wish we knew uh, out here was kind of knowledge of mushrooms. There are mushrooms in all places, but so many are poisonous that there's no point in risking eating any of them. If you had like a deep knowledge of mushrooms, you'd be able to have more food and to eat. You know, if we understood fungi a lot more, you know, there'd be kind of a bit more sustenance. But you know. Uh, that kind of happens, but you know, a lot of it's going to be poisonous anyway, so you know, we don't even touch it, we don't even get close to it, because it's not really worth it in the end. Uh, coming up to these kind of late stages, we are kind of having to get ourselves a daily routine, because, you know, we've proven that you can survive out here, uh, for like a decent period of time, but because we get into the later stages, we're kind of getting ready to go, you know, the end's in sight. And we kind of have to have a daily routine of getting things done, you know, getting water, water, uh, getting ourselves clean, uh, things like that. Uh, the routine will kind of keep us a bit more sane and kind of fill out our day a bit more rather than just kind of sitting around and just uh, kind of just kind of filming videos as much as we can. Done. So, yet again, in Malaysia, in this monsoon season, it's pouring down during the day for the thunderstorms. Uh, it's preventing us from doing anything other than stay 
and keep refuge inside the shelter. How do you find it? Um, we're not very dry to be fair. It seems like all, all the stuff that we've got on the shelter sort of first week, that seems to have died. So we're sort of only down to one sort of level of leaves. And that's letting quite a lot of water into the yeah. shelter. So we're getting very wet. It's super wet, as you can see outside. I had to put the night vision on uh, just because it's so it's getting dark outside, not because of the time of day, but because the clouds are just covering the sun. Uh, we've also uh, we've also had to bring in uh, a lot of twigs and sticks that we were keeping dry outside, uh, just so we can kind of keep them dry inside our shelter and hopefully use them to make fire when we get the opportunity. And here we go, just another time lapse of us kind of repairing our shelter after it was, you know, storming down in the middle of the day. You know, most of the day, we're just kind of fixing the shelter as we can. That's going to help us, you know, not be as miserable for the next fall. So that was 